I am really tired this morning, so coffee number two. The Cloisters is a very different beast if you're a fan of Dark Academia, and that's something that grabbed me right from the beginning and I was really, really excited about. This is Katie Hayes' debut... Katie Hayes's? Katie Hayes... Katie Hayes's... Katie Hayes's... Debut novel, The Cloisters. Is it even a debut? It is, I. The Cloisters is a Dark Academia novel. Dark Academia means a lot of different things. I've written an article that has a long list of Dark Academia novels in it, and I have to admit that list kind of stretches the definition slightly, but I try to justify each decision as best I can. Anyway, Dark Academia and I have had a bit of a rough journey together. There are some books that I really genuinely adore, one Dark Academia novel, If We Were Villains, by M.L. Rio, has become my second favourite novel ever. Other times, I've thought that the books were just okay. I concede that The Secret History is one of the most incredible books I've ever read, and yet I didn't actually enjoy reading it, which is a tough thing to try to get your head around. And the same goes for The Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo, probably her best book that I've read. And yet... That was alright. The Cloisters took me by surprise, and I'm really eager to talk about it. If you don't really know what Dark Academia is, very simply, Dark Academia novels are novels set in an academic world, almost always a prestigious university in the UK or the US. Usually the US. They're almost always written by women, by coincidence, and they will consist of a lot of dark themes and events. Murder is a very popular aspect, if not the main aspect. There's always death, murder, maybe other forms of death, like suicide or accidental death. And they often feel quite gothic in their execution, the fact that they're in a stagnant environment, a place where a lot of things change within it, but you don't move from place to place. There is no adventure here, no journey. They're often quite static and that gives them a very claustrophobic and gothic feel. And universities are old places where myths and legends and rumours have been spreading for centuries. And these rumours can be about things like weird old traditions or cults. And so what you're left with is the concept of a murder mystery gothic thing taking place in a prestigious place of learning. The cloisters is pretty much all of that, but it's set in a museum, rather than a university. And our protagonists are still academics. And so we begin with Anne Stilwell, who has just arrived in New York City. She is originally from a small nowhere town in Washington State. She's a budding expert in specific areas of Renaissance Italian history, culture, and art. And she landed herself a summer position at the Met, New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art. But when she gets there, she's told that her summer position doesn't exist anymore. And this guy happens to walk into the office when the news is broken to her and says, hey, can I have her? This guy turns out to be Patrick Rowland. He is a curator at a smaller museum that's attached to the Met called the Cloisters. It is an old Gothic place with a lot of gardens in it, hence the cover. The Cloisters stores a lot of Renaissance and medieval stuff from Europe, and so it's the perfect place for Anne to be. And so she says, yeah, 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 I'll spend my summer at the Cloisters. And so here you've got a bunch of gardens full of poisonous plants and flowers. You've got a beautiful old library, and you've got collections of art from Renaissance and medieval Europe. It's a beautiful setting, a darkly, dangerously beautiful setting. Roland is a pretty charming guy, and there's an extremely small cast of characters. You've got Anne, you've got Roland, you've got Roland's kind of second-in-command, a woman called Rachel, who comes from a very rich family, and you've got the gardener, Leo, who's a kind of rough guy. He's not an academic, he's more working class than the rest of them, if you like. Anne forms a friendship with Rachel, she forms a kind of mentor-mentee bond with Roland, and she forms a maybe-will-they-won't-they they budding romance with Leo. And that's it, that's your whole cast, aside from a few extras that come and go. It's just these four people. 
The museum setting gives this a different feel to the rest of Dark Academia. We're at a point now where we're treading water when it comes to university settings. So a museum, or maybe a library, makes perfect sense. You've still got your academics, you've still got your history, you've still got your traditions, you've still got a dark gothic setting, and you've still got ways of playing with gothic tropes like magic and arcana, niche religions, faiths and beliefs, long dead historical artifacts. And in the case of the cloisters, you've got tarot cards. This is kind of the fun thing that sets this book apart from many others, is that Roland, the curator of this museum, is obsessed with tarot cards. This was a really, really fun, happy coincidence for me because when you come out as a trans girl, you have to sign an agreement with a mysterious entity that says that you will start dressing goth and embrace the goth lifestyle. And that obviously includes getting into tarot cards. <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? Anyway, so I recently got into tarot. I'm a very grounded person. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in astrology or anything. But what I like about tarot is that it's... A fun way of gathering up your thoughts and being introspective. I've done a few tarot readings on myself since getting these cards, and I've also done them for friends. And the idea behind tarot is that you ask a question about yourself, about your present, about your future, something you're worried about, an idea that you have, any hopes or dreams, and you lay out the cards, and they help you gain a little bit of perspective. No magic, no religion, no woo-woo stuff. It's just a way of being introspective. And I really like it. It gives you some time with yourself. And all the while, you get to look at some really pretty cards that have really fun names and a fascinating history of their own. So getting into tarot has been great. And when I picked up a Dark Academia book that is all about tarot, I was thrilled. Roland believes in tarot. And he's looking to collect a set of traditional Italian tarot cards that will reveal a hidden mystery about the history of tarot. In the book, the protagonists discuss the history of tarot and how the French, about 200 years ago, turned it into a kind of divination thing. But before that, it served a much simpler purpose. And Roland believes, no, we can go back even further and find some mystical divination-related thing in the past of the tarots. <laughs> and so that's kind of the mystery that we're following. Roland and Rachel have differences of opinion when it comes to tarot cards, and doesn't really care one way or another, and so we follow her as she curiously just sits in the sidelines, helps them with their investigation, helps them with their academic journey back in time, and things get darker. Not in a superstitious way, but in a much more grounded way, which in a way is more frightening than anything superstitious or supernatural that might happen. The Cloisters doesn't do much to reinvent the wheel when it comes to murder mystery, dark academia, and the general gothic setting. But I like the fact that it was bold enough to replace its setting, that university setting that we've seen too many times, with a museum setting. We still have our academics, we still have history almost as a character in and of itself, as well as art and tradition and a kind of cult mentality. It's all still there. But putting it in a more public place like a museum adds an extra layer to it. It makes the characters think and behave and interact with each other a bit differently to how they would if they were 18 or 19 year olds at a university. Roland is much older than that. Rachel and Anne are young, as such have a slightly more reckless attitude. And it's weird to think about how this is a place that feels like an old English villa or something, but it's in the heart of Manhattan. There's something spooky in that, kind of like that Doctor Strange building. And the fact that as someone who has recently gotten really into tarot cards, learning about the history of them, or the supposed history, the potential history of them, was really, really fun. The Cloisters was a fun time. I like the fact that Dark Academia is being mixed up a little bit. The wheel isn't being reinvented, but we're finding new ways of exploring the genre and its themes and its tone in different ways by switching out the setting, by switching out the environment, and therefore by switching out the ways in which characters behave and grow and change and interact, which is everything in a piece of literature. 
I'm really impressed with the cloisters. Thank you, Katie Hayes. Now it's time for my Patreon book recommendation of the week, and this one comes from Tommy Trujillo, who said, My favourite book of last year was Leech by Hiron Ennis. Luckily, I've got a copy of that. This is a review copy that I never got around to reading, and now I have a very good reason to. Tommy said that it's a gothic novel set in a dystopian future with a tiny bit of sci-fi sprinkled in. The writing and imagery are so beautiful, and I think you might be into it. Thank you, Tommy. I needed a little bit of a push to get to this, and now I will. I also found out, via a different patron, that Abigail Thorne of Philosophy Tube does the audiobook of this, which is also really, really cool to know. Also, I might have said the author's name wrong, and I'm sorry about that, but... I'm excited to get to this. I'm glad I already have a copy, which doesn't happen a lot. Thank you, Tommy, for your recommendation. All right, if you like Dark Academia, go read The Cloisters and subscribe for books.